Hello, good morning, everybody. It is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, and thanks so much for joining me this morning. Pardon me one second while I have a cat. I need to, <laughs> he decided to chew on the box when I hit live. So good morning, I am live this morning. I have a $90 estate sale jewelry haul to share with you guys. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know, if you are new here, welcome. And this really is the morning for noises. Hey guys, I don't know what that electrical sound was. Can y'all turn it down a little bit? Thank you. Okay, <laughs> you know that's that's how it's gonna happen. If you hit live, then all the noises and cats and everything's gonna start exploding, right? Okay, but if you are here, welcome. I do have a ninety dollar estate sale haul, and if you're new, again, welcome. If you are wanting to learn more about jewelry or figure out maybe why your jewelry isn't selling, then make sure you do these three things: go down there and hit subscribe. Join me on. Facebook at Texas Gals Jewelry Lovers, that's our jewelry group, and follow me on Facebook at Texas Gal Treasures because I put out lots of great information about selling jewelry, how to improve your listings, and stay tuned at the end because we have got something really exciting going on in Jewelry Lovers, um, Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers that I'm going to share with you at the end so you don't want to miss it because it's really exciting. I mean, I'm really excited about this new thing that we're, we're doing to help us learn and grow our jewelry businesses. Okay, so let's jump into this haul. Um, I am live. I The chat is, I think, this way for you if you're watching later or down below if you're on mobile. Um, but if you're interested in ever coming and hanging out with the tribe, all the cool kids are doing it. They are in the chat talking to one another. Um, so definitely hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when I go live. Okay, there we go. Let's do this. The first little bit that I'm going to show you are there's a few little things that I got that were not jewelry related necessarily. One of them kind of. Um, this was in the in there in the in the hall. Um, so a buck I spent for this whole bag full of keys, which could I didn't I didn't look it up, but you know if I was going to sell these, people buy bags or lots of um, vintage keys and stuff. Yes, Tony, you're a cool kid. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's got all these, I mean, old, and, and that's another thing too, I didn't look it up, but it's got old, um, like Ford keys back when it was a key, you know, um, so there's lots and lots of keys in there. So that's one thing I picked up that wasn't necessarily um, jewelry related. And then another thing, it's, it's like when it rains, it pours, you know, when you, I don't find vintage postcards forever. And then I found a bunch of them that I bought recently at a charity shop here. And then I went to this uh, estate sale and they had a bunch more. So I, if you've been following me for a while, you know we're moving, which is why I'm in this sterile environment, <laughs> but we're moving and I'm looking into really downsizing the kinds of things I buy, smaller things. Um, so there were more vintage postcards there. So I've got lots. Um, she sold them for 50 cents a bundle. Some of them are little, you know, souvenir books. Um, so these ones I still have to look up. There's lots of fun ones. There's um, there's those, and then I have a big giant basket over here. Hang on. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to do a little bit of Google Translate before I shared just in case, but I, this word didn't translate for some reason. So now it makes me worried showing it on the air. So if you speak what I believe to be German, it says the something. I don't know, invasion maybe? I don't know, the fellows are coming in. But anyway, there's lots of cool um, and quite inappropriate <laughs> cards. I won't show them all. Anyway, but then there's a whole big basket full, um, and a lot of them are Hawaiian, which is really cool. So these are the things, the extras, um, that I'm trying to get this a stack so I can set it down. Hang on. Okay, there we go. So it's out of the way. Now those are out of the way. And I recently did a video about postcards and selling postcards online. Um, I'll link it here later after the show. So if you're interested in that as well, then check it out. So now, jewelry. Here we go. Dana says, I've been collecting postcards for decades. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, I am I know a little bit. I've sold some postcards, but I'm definitely um, a, a beginner. Um, I've sold some. I've been trying to teach myself more about it, doing some research and talking to people that I know that have been doing a great job selling postcards. So that is cool. All right, so what else did we get? I'm gonna show you what my son got. This was 75 cents. It's just a little glass container full of trinkets and oddities. There's a little porcelain horse and 
whatnot. Anyway, just little, little things. I'm going to get to the jewelry, but I, I separated it out to make it a little bit easier for us as we go. Um, so I separated out all the broken stuff and the things that weren't exactly jewelry. But if you saw, oh, I didn't pull it up. Let me pull up the picture. Um, so you can see the extent of this haul. It's on my Instagram. I shared it. So let me pull that up so you can see, because I was going to hold up each box, but I figured, you know what? It'll just be easier if I show you the pictures on Instagram. Here we go. Screen sharing in three, two, one. Here we go. So this is the haul. So you can see there's all the postcards. And there were there was one of these little drawer things and boxes and tins and then there was a a whole jewelry box over here. Those are the postcards. So you can see all of this stuff. Um, and it was ninety dollars. It's interesting because when I went, you know, she had it all laid out on the table, and I just said, you know, I was the first one there. Normally, there's people picking through the jewelry, but there was nobody else there yet looking at the jewelry. And to me, I was just like, you know what? I see plenty here. To work with so I turned to the lady and said how much if I just buy it all it was an estate sale that was being like a family run like the family was selling the the parents um, belongings and so I just said how much if I just want to buy it all and take it with me and she was like I don't know I gotta ask my sister she go you know she sends her somebody in ask the sister and the sister says no I'm not selling it in a big lot like that so I said, okay. So I just started like collecting all of it, except for some like plasticky beads. And so I ended, ended up having this big bunch of stuff, like you saw. And the um, one sister was like, I just want to give you a big price for it. Let's just do that. The other sister comes out and starts picking one piece at a time out of all of that stuff, y'all. Let me share it again. So you just imagine me sitting there. And the I, I was like, okay. She's like, it's a dollar a piece. It's a dollar a piece. And so she starts going through the jewelry. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> that was something else. <laughs> um, she starts going through each, like the tin and the jewelry box, and she's picking out one piece at a time. One dollar, two dollar, three, dollars, counting them up. Um, and so I was just like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do this then. But she quickly realizes that that's not going to work. It's going to take her forever. So finally, she just says, um. 90 bucks so i was like okay i was actually going to offer more if they had asked me how much do you want to give me for all of it i actually had a bigger number in mind so it worked out in our both of our favors so okay here we go so things that are not quite jewelry related that were in there there was this um keychain now some of um we've been talking a little bit about some of these little bits that, that don't end up being worth that much little extras um, that some people say, I can't remember who was giving that, that she does this, where she, you know, if it's something that matches what the person bought, she'll throw in a little like extra gift. So some of these things, I don't know about this, you know, could end up going into a jewelry lot just to be a, a curiosity. I have sold a, a lot that was just broken pieces and little curious bits. Um, so that may end up being what goes with that. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much. Go over there and hit the thumbs up. Um, so then there were also two. These are kind of like Maltese crosses, sort of. Um, and these are Cayman Islander. And I don't know anything about that. I'm guessing it's somebody who went to the Cayman Islands and brought back these doubloons. I'm not sure. Um, and then in as I was going through, there were little bits that were broken, little bits that were not jewelry, like these little teddy bears. Um, but I still think, hang on, let me show you this one. I still think that they would be good in a craft lot when I get there. So this piece, which is gorgeous, um, was a brooch at one point, but it is broken. So I could see this going into a craft lot of broken things. Um, and also, as I was going through, there were some pieces that were missing stones, but I would find the stones in the bottom of the drawers or something. So I threw them all in, in here so that I can, if I get to that point where I want to, there was one piece that I was wanting to repair, which I don't normally, but there's one that was like, wow, this is really nice. We are in a small apartment right now. So, <laughs> okay, so these were some other pieces that were um, broken or missing stones that I just kind of dropped into a, a container so there's that these were some cuff links that the backs were broken off but if we chose to repair them we probably could um that one's cool it's missing some stones um then this is a really nice one 
that I want to um, find out about repairing. So it's got this cameo in front and then it's got this stretch kind of band on it. And I know what this is called and I can't remember right now, but it, the, the clasp is broken. So I'm pretty sure there's a way to repair this, but it's so awesome, isn't it? And it looked like this was gonna be a, uh, like a locket, but it's not. But I think the cameo is a real cameo, like a shell cameo. The reason I think that is you can see the way it's set, first of all, it, I did a video recently about cameos, which I can link to. Um, you can see how the, the silver part is molded to the shape of the cameo. And then the way it's set on there with this silver, like, twisted chain on there. Um, and then you can, if you can see, you can see where the scrape marks were, where it was carved. I don't know if you can see it really well. You can kind of make it out right in that area on the video. Um, so it might even sell, even though it's broken, it might be something that would sell anyway by itself. I'm not sure, but I'm going to see about fixing it because it's gorgeous. I would be, t I would be tempted to keep it. It's just so pretty. Okay. So that may end up going with my mini cameo collection. Um, this is something else that was not quite, oh, did you watch that today? Karen, Karen she watched the cameo video today. Um, this was another piece that I got in there that wasn't exactly jewelry, but it says five bucks in there, but I don't think she charged. Anyway, it was within the $90. So it's a little shoe um, ashtray. And then there's some markings on the bottom. So I'll have to look that up. But I, I just thought it was darling. A little cute little shoe. You <laughs> know, it's a little ashtray. Um, so there's that. And then I had another box full of just like broken pieces or maybe like an earring that didn't have a mate that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, some of them would end up just in a craft lot when I get there, you know. Some were cool, I was really disappointed that the mates weren't there, like this, look at this one. So that's a clip-on earring right there, but the mate wasn't in there. But still, it'll be in a fun lot that somebody will enjoy. Ah, that almost, <laughs> where am I gonna put it all? I know, um, yeah, I don't know. When we move, I will have a place. All right, again, this one as well. This one is a really cool brooch, but it is broken. This one would be a way easier fix because it's really just missing the, the shaft part that comes across, and it could just easily be fixed in there. So this one is one that I could fix. It's not missing any stones, so that might be something I look into doing, you know, just repair it because it's cool. So I definitely don't see myself having any problems um, making my money back. So, cause if you think about it, $90, I would have to sell like nine things at 10 bucks, right? And there's more than enough here for that. Now this I bought cause I like music boxes and things. I realized later that one of the feet was broken, but that's okay. Cause I like music boxes. I have a little collection of music boxes where you can see the workings and all of that. I don't know why they just fascinate me. Um, anyway, yeah. Oh, thank you. And guess what I've lost? Again, I've lost my magnet, but luckily there's a little magnet here I can use. <laughs> okay, so let's dive into some of this other jewelry that's not broken. So this is the drawers. I've, I've separated things out so we can kind of categorize things into bro we'll do brooches, we'll do necklaces, we'll do bracelets. Um, so here we go. First drawer, we've got a lot of jewelry and um, necklaces. Let's start with those. So a lot of chains. Um, so I think that the person may have either sold Avon or really bought a lot of Avon stuff because there was some, hey James, can you bring your locket so I can show them? <laughs> so this is one locket that was in the lot here. Um, it's nice because it's got the little plastic coating that you can put the, the pictures behind. Um, and I did not see a maker's mark on this. The one that James has is really cool and it has a, a an Avon maker's mark. So there's that. Um, it's okay, babe. If you can't, you can't, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so then next, and I would think, I mean, at least, at least $10 or, or more on that. So um, here's another necklace that it just needs to be retwisted and it'll look, hey, you know what? Never mind. it's okay. James, look at me. James, look at me. It's okay, Never mind. Um, 
So once I retwist this, you know, it, it'll look a lot nicer. Oh, did you find it? Okay, cool. You found those ones? Okay, I'll show them those things. That's okay, babe. That's okay. All right, so there's that. Again, no maker's mark, but it's really cool. And right now, I'm when my store was live, it's going to be live again soon, but when it was live, I did really well with things that were like mixed material or um, hammered, I don't know. So things that were metal with mixed materials seemed to do pretty well for me. So there's that. Again, I would, I'm would i going to guesstimate prices because I didn't look up everything. Um, so I would think once I get it all twisted up and made it, <laughs> you know, not kinking up like that right there, um, probably around the $15 to $17 mark on that piece. So now these, these other chains that I've got, there's just some random, they're not silver. Let me get on my, my <laughs> magnet for now. Um, they're not silver, but what I'll probably do is one of two things, either they will go into a lot, or if I find a really cool um, pendant that's not silver as well, just like a costume jewelry one that's cool enough to sell, then I can save one of these chains for that. Now my kids have recently gotten into steampunk and creating things like that, so this may end up in something that they you know, want to chain to do something with as well. So there's a few of those like that also. Now this one, I don't remember if I checked it out or not with the magnet. So this one might might be silver. I just didn't get a chance to, to look real close at it. Uh, so there's a chance that that one's silver that maybe had like a vermeil. I always say it wrong or <laughs> on there. So there is that. Okay, so that's the first little drawer with the necklaces. If you saw one of the videos I did lately with the untang, oh, I had such a tangle of chains i thought i was going to lose my mind let's see those are i'm trying to stick with necklaces to start with so let's start with the necklaces there's a little like made in china baggy of pearls faux pearls um that'll probably end up just in a lot and again same thing with these you know it's a nice looking chain as you can see not real gold but what i'll probably do same deal it'll either hang out with me if i find a cool pendant to put on it or it'll go into a lot like that okay now this one's really pretty which i will sell um again costume jewelry but it's got this sweet bow with these tassels and it's got a gold and a black chain which i thought was really sweet so there's that this one you know probably go up around that 15 to 17 dollar mark there we go um and then also in here is this one it had a really interesting closure it had this like s hook closure on a heart. Let's see what it says on this. I don't I don't know where my loop is, so that's another I can't see. It says AH and I can't read the other word on there. Oh, where's my phone? Um yeah, I can't really read that. But it's, you know, from what I remember from going through. Oh no, it's not attracting to my magnet. Mm, hang on, let me put it down flat and see if it'll attract. So if you're new and you're like, what is the deal with the magnet? Um, so the magnet will let me know if it is magnetic, then it's not gold or silver, but this one is not attracting and it's got a mark. So I'm gonna have to look at that a little closer because I can't see that tiny. Um, <laughs> so there. Verme, okay, okay, um, yeah. Okay, you miss Penelope, yeah. <laughs> well, there might be something for Penelope in this lot. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, Penelope is a alter ego. Anyway, <laughs> so here's another one. This one I will try to sell. It's got the scales of justice on a nice gold tone chain. I actually might switch the chain out because this chain does not really match this pendant. But this other one, which is not quite as shiny gold, might actually go better with it. So I might actually switch this gold chain for that gold chain. Because I think it looks better. Uh, again, no maker's mark, but I think I could pretty easily get $15 to $20 for a necklace like that. You know, if someone was like a law student or, you know. Okay, then we've got, hello, good morning. Thanks for coming, everybody. And if you guys have questions in the chat, um, drop them in there. Um, <laughs> oh, good, good. Okay, so there is this one. Again, I'm guessing it's probably like an Avon. Oh, a Libra. Okay, that's another good, Karen. Thank you. 
yeah, um, just some little rhinestones in a, a chain. I love this style chain. I always forget the name of it. I have to look it up every time because I forget. It's not the Byzantine, is it? Maybe it is. Anyway, um, I'm guessing this is probably an Avon piece, but you know, still think I could get 10 bucks for it. So there's that. Could you, Rand, since you're walking right past there, when you get a second, could you grab my phone out of my purse? Because I need the um, magnifier because there's a mark here that I missed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, let me take a peek. What I do when I can't find my magnifier, and if you know the story, my my um, my loop and my magnet are they they've broken up, so they can no longer apparently be in the same room at the same time, or I could just never find them at the same time. But what I think has happened now, since I can't find my magnet, is that maybe they made up and they've eloped. Um, <laughs> it's either that or I lost it. So, but it's much more fun to pretend like they've run away together. <laughs> so here's the here's the mark that's on there. If I can get it to hold still. Nope, I can't. A.H. Vendome. I'm going to have to look that up. Or H.A. V-E-N-D-O-M-E. -E, and then the O has the Macron over the top. If you, for my fellow teachers who <laughs> know phonics. Um, okay. So we'll have to look that up because that's a new one for me. All right, I'm moving these little drawers to the side so I can show you some more necklaces. Okay, so this was another one that I thought was gorgeous. The starfish, where is the starfish? <laughs> I, I hesitate to ask because I have to ask the kids to find it. Um, this was another one that I, I want to do a little bit more digging on. It's got an N... R, I think is what that says on there, but it's got this gold chain. I really liked the clasp. I mean, the, it's got the lobster clasp, but for whatever reason, it feels like like a higher quality. And then it's got these sort of painted. They look like they're trying to be little gold pearls, um, but it was not magnetic. And when I oh, Vendome is good. Okay, good, good, good. That's good. Thank you, Murphy the Esky. Um, it wasn't magnetic. Oh, no, it's caught on there, so it's not really pulling. When I was test, you know, checking it out, it wasn't magnetic. So I just, I don't think it's gold, just by looking at it um, and feeling of it. But it's really pretty. I think it's really feminine. So I don't think I would have trouble selling that for, you know, 15, 17 bucks. I know that seems like my go-to for costume jewelry. That's not if I don't know better, if I don't know or haven't looked it up more. Um, but it's a safe roundabout number. Now this is 1928, which is a really good brand. There are people that like this brand a lot and collect it. It is a costume jewelry brand, but here's that tag, 1928. You can see it. And so this is a double chain locket. It's got a barrel clasp. The barrel clasp is one that like swivels, like looks like a barrel. And this is a really pretty 1928 locket. I have not looked it up. Um, but that's what it looks like. On this one, I would think it would go for a little bit more just because of that, you know, 1928-ness. All right, so here's that on the inside. So I'm guessing about 20 bucks, but I'll have to look um, and see what, what else is out there. Maybe, maybe less, maybe more, but that's my guess. That's my guess. Um, I've got a little, I think this one says Colorado. Yep, Colorado. A little Colorado, I think it's supposed to be for a, a charm bracelet, but there's a Colorado, it's got a, this enamel over it, you know, or, yeah. Anyway, on a little chain, so it's pretty sweet. Little pendant charm. So that, okay, good, good. Thanks guys in the chat. Um, we've got a Closinet necklace with, I think that's a hummingbird on there. And I, I always say I wish Closin' A sold better than it does, but it just doesn't. I always think it's so pretty, but it doesn't sell as well as I think it should. So probably about 10 bucks on the Closin' A. And then I've got a really pretty necklace here. Oh, nice, Kaylee. <laughs> okay, so this one, again, once I get it squared away and not tangled, um, it's got a really nice, hang on. Let me untangle it. There's a little hook, so it keeps hooking on there. Ah, oh, I got it. Okay, so both sides of the 
closure have these sort of like umbrella look to them. Um, so it's a multi-chain necklace that looks like that. Unfortunately, the really cool part is gonna be in the back where no one can see it. So that's the part that I think is so cool, but it's in the back. Anyway, <laughs> so um, again, I didn't see a maker's mark on this. So probably, you know, around 10, 15 bucks. I don't think it's super amazing, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, then let's see if I've got some more. I know I have some more necklaces for you. And then in the other thing, there are more necklaces over there. Okay, so this one was a mystery for me. I kind of feel like it's boot jewelry or dog jewelry. We had to talk about dog jewelry once before too. Um, Dana says, antique dealers used to love clothes and I, I still do. I think it's so pretty, <laughs> but I just, yeah. All right, so this necklace is small for one. It's, I mean, even for a child, that would be too small. So I think it's either dog jewelry or maybe would go on your like boots, you know, if you're wearing boots, but there's only one. So there's that. So if I can't figure it out, it'll go into a lot. Um, and then this one, which is really pretty, it's what I think, I mean, it looks like malachite, but I don't know that it's, re the reason I don't think that it might not be really malachite is that the back is closed. But then again, it could still be, so that's what the back looks like. Generally, if you've got a real stone, they want the back to be open um, so you can see. But it looks, I mean, it looks, and it, you know, it sounds, it sounds legit. So I don't know, maybe. Um, so there's that, which is pretty cool. It's kind of got an art deco-y look to it, sort of. It might be a stretch, but you know, definitely geometric. And there are people that love malachite. So I don't like that closure though. It just popped right out, didn't it? I need something a little more secure in there, people. Let's get see if it'll clip better. No, that's that clasp might need to be adjusted to tighten it up a little bit. Um, which is not too hard. Oh, I just noticed a mark on the back of that. Let's see. Oh my gosh. What has happened to my eyes, you guys? I have turned over 40 and now I can't see right. I'm taking a picture with my phone because my loop has run away. <laughs> oh, it says Germany. Okay, so cool. So most likely vintage because of the mark. Choo, choo, choo. I don't, it doesn't have a West Germany, so that would definitely make it vintage. Um, perhaps include listing under, okay, okay, yeah. Now here's another necklace, which I think is so sweet, but so tiny. Look, it's got these little leaves on it, which is just adorable. And let's see if we can't read the mark when I flip it around. What does it say? I think it says China, uh, or maybe not. Oh, brother. <laughs> I thought I caught all the marks. Um, but yeah. If you have an iPhone, push your home button three times. Okay, one, two, three. Look. <laughs> it is an iPhone. Okay, I'm flipping it around to magnify you. It says, oh, still can't read it. Avon, okay. So this is an Avon, um, and there, you know, my son was asking about that. Well, does Avon sell? I said, well, there are some pieces that that can do well for Avon. Some Avon stuff, just like the perfume bottles, for the most part, um, avoid. But there are some Avon pieces that that's I've sold Avon cufflinks before, so there's that. Okay, now check out this piece. These are they they're trying to look like well, they're not Rivoli, but they're that kind of like watermelon color. Like if you know what watermelon Rivoli's are, they're kind of like that, but they're not Rivoli. Um, but it's a keychain, or it was. It's missing the keychain part. But isn't that cool? It'll probably end up in a a lot just because of awesome. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. Unless I get a keychain loop for it and stick it on my keys, I just thought it was super cool. Um. So. Oh, hello, hello. Um, there are some button covers here. Now there's only three, but I may still go ahead because they really have a nice Southwest feel to them. Um, they're, they look like so. Um, but yeah, there's only three. Generally with button covers, there's like five or six. So, um, okay. Yeah, the, <laughs> those perfume bottles, yeah, the Avon perfume bottles. 
I think the only one I would try to find was Tonga. <laughs> Just out of, it's got a tiki theme to it, yeah. Okay, so then next up I've got these sweater clips. They've got this nice, um, I guess it's either like a pine cone or maybe a, it might be a stretch to call it. Yeah, it's more of a pine cone. I was gonna say like a pineapple, um, but it's definitely like a pine cone. So those are those sweater clips. Um, yeah, and I did not look these up, but I've sold sweater clips before, so that will definitely go up for sale. I mean, 10 bucks at least. And then this one, I don't know. This is one of those where I'm just like, I know it's not something I like, but somebody else likes, you know. You can't get into that only selling what you like. Well, I guess you can if you want. You can do whatever you want. But if you're wanting to make money, you got to know and lots of different things sell. This will probably end up in a lot, though, honestly. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Okay, so there's that drawer. Um, I'll, I have more necklaces. I'll come back to those in a sec because they're in the other jewelry box. These are just the drawers that I can get at right now. So let me stick these to the side. And I'll grab the next one for you. Let me know if you have questions as I go along too. Um, the next bit are pendants, straight to straight pendants and um, watches and bracelets. So first up, you know, I can find one of those necklaces to, to hang this on. Uh, again, probably an Avon piece, but it's cute. So I'll probably try to sell it, um, especially with the, you know, romantic, you know, I don't know if you would say Edwardian sort of style. Um, I'd have to look up and see a little bit closer about what the styling would be on that. And then there's this really cool cross. So this side is kind of like this, it looks like blue wood or leather wrap really tight. Um, and then when you twist it around, it's you know got all this wire wrapping and silver on the front. Um, so yeah, I'll just put this on a chain. It's really, again, that I don't know what it is lately with mixed metals. Um, definitely seem to be doing well, so, or have been for me, unless it's dropped out. Okay, and then another probably Avon pendant. This will probably go into a lot, um, just because, just because, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is another wire-wrapped, probably homemade-looking. I Hey, put the cat down, please. Um, ring. <laughs> yeah, we are in a small apartment right now, so there's not a whole lot of separation. So here we go. I, I'm guessing, again, I'll have to check out the comparables that are out there, but it still has a nice sort of Celtic knot feel to the back of it, even though it's um, handmade. I mean, I would guess, you know, 10, 15 bucks maybe for that and then I have no idea I've not come across anything quite like these so I they're these pearl rings you know faux pearl somebody looks again looks homemade but hey I couldn't do it so I might put them just in a little lot together I don't know maybe not I, I just might try to sell them as they are um steampunk wiring oh yeah yeah good point uh, we could pop we we could pop a watch part on there quick and, and let them jack the price up, right? Um, yeah, again, I, I don't know about those. I would have to just look it up and see. Uh, then there are a couple more rings, and these will probably end up in a lot. We'll see. This one it is a – I'm trying to make sure it's what it is, what I think it is. So it's – I'm putting my finger on it because I don't – maybe it is a mood, mood ring, but it also looks like it has abalone. Maybe it's just abalone. Hang on. So it's like a maple leaf, and it looks like just some inlaid sort of abalone shell in there. Like that. I kept putting my finger on it thinking maybe it's a, a mood ring. <laughs> Canadians, nice and nicer, right? That's what <laughs> that's the stereotype. Um, so there's that. And then this will probably end up in a lot too. I think it's supposed to be a bug. It's got little leaves or wings or something. And then this is an Avon ring, which I may try to see if I can sell. Um, it's in good shape, so I might just try to sell that. I'm guessing, you know, $10, $15 on that, but maybe more. You never know. Um, the ring looks, oh, thank you. Okay, I'm missing. Okay, yeah. That would be awesome, the, the steampunk thing. 
How do you, you know what? I'm going to be doing a video very soon about how I store my jewelry. So you'll, you'll see, you will see soon. Oh no. Here, let me show you two of the things James got. So James used some of his money because he's trying to venture into, he picked up some good stuff. So he picked up this ring with these little stones in it. it looks like so very cool. Um, and this one is HGE. So it's 18 K HGE, which is hard gold electroplated. So really cool electroplated ring, which I think he will have no problem reselling. He also picked up the swank cufflinks and tie bar for a dollar. So he will definitely get his money back on that. I'm guessing 20 something. I showed that at the beginning. Yeah. If you find the other locket, cool. If not, that's cool. He also got a really nice locket. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Karen. Thanks for coming. <laughs> okay. So then some of the bracelets that were in there, this one was a grandma, grandmother love ring. Um, and it's in really good shape, so I may just go ahead and put it up. Can you unwrap that in there, please? Thank you. Um, then there's a, oh, where's the other watch? Oh, there was another watch that I was wearing yesterday, um, another Timex watch, but it was a windable one that, you know, it's winding. So I'll have to do a little bit. We're still learning about watches. <laughs> um, and then again, another one of these stretchy bracelets but it's not got anything on it. So it might just end up in a lot as well. Um, this one will probably go into a lot. It looks okay, but it's, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. This one I believe is an Avon as well. Hang on, let me see. Yeah, that's an Avon one, but I like this a lot. So I really think that, that this will sell for, I mean, at least $15, I'll put it up. And then this one, I had something similar to this um, copper bracelet. It's got this native style, Native American style, Southwest is what I'll have to put on it, copper bracelet. So again, that one, I'm gonna have to double check on prices for that. Do I ever sell stretchy bracelets? I do, I have sold some. Um, I sold one that was, I was, it was one of those, like I challenged myself to sell this. And it was red, white, and blue beads and then that metal like flag. And I think I sold it for 10 bucks, right? So they'll sell. So it's just a matter of, do I want to list it? Or do I want to put it in a lot? I mean, it's in good shape, so maybe. Now like, look at this one. <laughs> so this is a pendant maybe, or maybe it was a um, food jewelry. I don't know. Ready for it? You ready? One, two, three, turn. Pastrami. Can you read that? It says pastrami on it. So I, I don't know. Uh, I think it's for one of those like food and cheese plates where they would have out the different fancy stuff. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Unless somebody is just like, my dog's name is pastrami. Let's get pastrami. <laughs> hey, I'm sure there's probably a, a pet out there named pastrami. So. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks, okay. Um, go down there and hit the thumbs up, guys. If you're watching, again, um, leave a comment later letting me know what kind of things you are trying to learn about jewelry because I have got a huge long list of videos um, and tutorials that I'm going to be doing. And again, stay tuned at the end because there's something going on in Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers that you don't want to miss. So I don't want to tell you about it at the end of the show. Um, Looks like a dog tag, right? <laughs> oh, thank you, Asher Dawn. Okay, next up is this ceramic cactus brooch, um, which I think will sell. I think it's really pretty. Um, again, probably 12, 15 bucks. I know some people say my prices sound crazy, there's no way, but I figure, I mean, I'm, I'm guesstimating, but I wouldn't list it for less than, than $8 on anything pretty much, because that's just my go-to. But, and also, uh, here's a tip too. If you're selling jewelry, it's not always a quick flip. You know what I mean? There might be some pieces that are gonna be quick flips, but a lot of times you put your jewelry up and they're long tail, you're waiting for the right buyer. So I'm perfectly happy listing something and waiting for the right buyer to come along. And yeah, after a certain amount of time, you know, drop down the price if it's not where you want it to be or put it on sale, something like that. Um. Okay, then, da, 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 da. 
So again, I have got a brooch, a Christmas tree brooch, which generally sell, you know, so I don't think I'll have a problem selling that. This one, this is one of those I'm like, uh, probably going to a lot, but I'll check first. I'll double check what's out there because again, it's just one of those like, I don't like it. So maybe I need to double check because it may still be something people like. Um, oh yeah, they're, they're having a chat in the, uh, in the chat about steampunk stuff. My kids have just recently really gotten into steampunk. So lots of watch gears and parts. And we went to a steampunk fair, you know, where we got to see what people were making and it was really cool. Pardon me. Okay, then this, it's like a fuzzy red heart. I, I like it. I think I'm gonna try to sell it. You know, like a fuzzy red heart lapel pin. I mean, I'm guessing it'll be on the lower end, you know, closer to to the $8, but I really think it's cute. Um, okay, so we're on brooches now. So another, another Christmas tree brooch. And this one has a maker's mark that I can't read. Um, I don't think it says Avon. But I'll, I'll look at close. I'll look at it closer later. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the flower. You might wear that to church or something, right? <laughs> okay, so the person. Okay, well before I get there, oh, well, where did they go? Okay, maybe they're in another one. Okay, take a look at this brooch. This brooch has got. I obviously it's from their travels. I don't know where. Over. I can't read that, y'all. I'm gonna have to hold it up close here, so y'all, so I can read it. Uh, I'm guessing Germany, but it's got this hat. It's got this, you know, crest, and then a pickaxe. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do a little digging on that and figure out where it is and and <laughs> everything. Oh, Granny says, I love roses and hummingbirds and butterflies. Okay, see, that's the thing. There, there's something, like it's something I may not like, but obviously there, yeah. I gotta get out of that mentality, right? I mean, at least I know enough to know that I have that mentality, right? Okay, again, um, here's a brooch with these rhinestones. Now, the, the rhinestone in the middle is, I think that's what they call dead, because it starts turning like gray and black, and but I'll probably, I don't know, let me know what you think. Do you think I should go ahead and sell it as is or put it in a lot? Because it still, you know, it still has the birch part on the back. Um, okay, let me get these back in here and then I'll share with you the next little drawer. I told you it's a big one. Okay, so the next drawer, we've got some brooches still on their cards. So this one says made in Austria and it's a little bug, super cute. Um, we've got this. Mam Mamsel hand polished. I believe that to be a J. Yeah, a J. And um, we've got another Mamsel. And this one is a hand engraved genuine gold finish brooch. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And let's see. Where are we here? Oh, this is gorgeous. Okay. So here's this brooch. It's, this is called Love Story. So you might see this on like a porcelain plate where like all around the edge of the plate, there'll be little um, vignettes kind of like this with different scenes and it's called Love Story. So this is a little Love Story brooch where, you know, they're courting and all that. Um, so I just realized that, is that open? Is that a locket? Hang on, hang on. No, maybe not. Okay, I thought maybe it opened. I'm still not convinced. I'm gonna look at it. No, maybe not. Okay, so a nice little love story brooch. I, I haven't checked what you know what these go for out there, but I'm I mean my guess is 25 something bucks, 25 plus on that. Because it's in such good shape and it's got quite a good size to it. Um yeah. Oh you this says rhinestone brooch is 50s, 60s, love it. Oh, good, good, good. Let's see. It could be, so, okay, okay. So it as is, not missing any stones, okay. Um, it depends on how they're broken, Kaylee. She's asking how to, how to fix a broken brooch. Okay, so here we have a dolphin brooch, which I will try to sell, because I know there are people that love dolphins. Um, again, probably around that $10, $15 mark. This Roadrunner, I love it. It's sort of a copper, 
Roadrunner. Um, I'm going to look at what what's com comparable out there. But I know, this is one of my biggies. I love figural stuff um, because there's a collector for everything, right? And there's somebody out there who loves Roadrunners or their mom loves Roadrunners and they need a Roadrunner present. So I'm guessing at least 15 or more on the Roadrunner brooch. So, um, and then this is another one that's pretty cool, but I know it's broken. It's missing some legs. So this is a bug of some sort, a yellow bug. You know, here's its antenna. There's its hind legs. And you, I can see where the other legs used to be right here and here. But the other legs are gone. So I can't decide if I should try to sell it anyway. I mean, it's yellow, which is unusual. It's kind of like golden yellow. It's really pretty. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Um, <clears throat> then what have we got? We've got a little dog brooch. You know, maybe uh, that would probably be on the closer end to eight. If this was more of a recognizable breed, is that a poodle? What is that? So if it was a recognizable breed, it would be a lot easier for me to sell it for a higher price. But this is, uh, I mean, it kind of has like a little chin, like a schnauzer, but then it's got the, I don't even know. So yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, break all the legs off of the Christmas tree. Oh, okay. So she's saying, just take off this and this, and then you've got, yeah, that's, that's an option. I mean, it's pretty. I like the colors and the stones and stuff. Um, yeah, Dana, I would put, I would definitely use Southwest or Southwestern as one of my um, keywords for the Roadrunner. You know, desert animal. Yes. Okay. Now, the person or the person whose belongings these were was a bowler. So we've got Austin Bowlerama. We've got a number of uh, bowling little pins. The dog looks like a poodle. See, I, I might put, yeah, if, as long as I can put a breed on there, that, you know, makes the, the price tick up a little bit. So there's a number of little bowling pins, which I think uh, I'm going to look up because I don't want to just automatically lot them together because I know there are people that collect bowling pins. So, hang on, there's some more. Look at this one. This is a really sweet bowling pin. Hang on, here we go. That one's sort of an enamel. It's got that um, luster, oh, like almost like a luster wear. It's got that iridescence to it. And it's got little rhinestones, look, around the top. Isn't that sweet? No, there's no maker's mark on it. But um, so this one will probably go for more. I'll have to look it up. But I'm guessing, you know, 10, 15 bucks on that one is my guesstimate. Again, there's a few more little bowling ones like that. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few little bowling ones, and then there's a seahorse. So my seahorse little pin, it's tiny, but depending on what I see out there, again, it's figural, so I'm guessing at least 10 bucks on my little seahorse. I know some of you probably think I'm smoking it, but wait till I sell it. <laughs> I get these comments like, how do you think you're going to sell it for that? I'm telling you, the people that collect things, they want the things that they collect, you know, and if they don't have it, they're willing to spend a little bit more. Okay, we got another little drawer full of brooches to share. There's lots of brooches, which are so fun, right? They're just like little mini works of art. Okay, this one is missing a stone, so it'll probably go into a lot. Um, isn't the bowling pin nice? Uh, yeah, here's a hummingbird, which again, people collect hummingbirds. So there's that little hummingbird. I mean, this one, maybe, because I know there's more hummingbird brooches out there than like Roadrunner brooches. So the market's a little thicker, you know? So this one might be closer to the $8 mark. Just depends on what I see out there. Um, this one's unusual because it's very specific on somebody's initials, GJ, but I will still, you know, put it up, I mean, 10, 15 bucks in that, and probably in that range. Because somebody whose initials are GJ are like, yes, I found something with my initials. Um, okay, this is really, really, really pretty. I almost don't want to keep it in the drawer with the other ones. So this is a brooch with this gorgeous blue flower. And then these are the clip-on earrings. I don't normally sell lots together, but these ones I'm really tempted to. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll list the brooch. And then I'll put in my listing, you know, find the matching earrings here. And I'll have the listing for the earrings there. 
but these ones are so sweet together. I hate to separate them, <laughs> right? Um, hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? Oh my gosh, thanks for coming. And I'm gonna have to peek at them a little closer to see about Maker's Mark, but I didn't see any at first glance, which is amazing to me because it's, look at the detailing on the on the leaf. I mean, it's just really well done. So I'm gonna have to set it aside because we were talking about this in the group. Like, how do you identify pieces at, if they're unmarked? Like, what? Because there's some brands that did have pieces they put out that were unmarked. I wish I knew more about that. So that might be something that we have to explore in the group for sure. Um. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're part of it. I separated it all out. So we've done some of the necklaces, we've done some of the bracelets and pendants, and now we're going through brooches. And then I've got some more over here. I've got men's accessories still coming, clip-on earrings, and more necklaces coming. The bigger necklaces I put in the other box. So wasn't it pretty? Oh my gosh. Here's another one It's missing a stone, um, but it's gonna go into a lot. Another, just a circle-y one. This one, you know, maybe eight to ten dollars on that. And <laughs> there was another kind of enamel one like this that I might put with that was a snowman, but it had the same kind of look to it. So those two may go together. <laughs> um here's another one that I don't know. I, I might put it into a lot just just because. There's yeah, eh, we'll see. This one is really cool, but I need to find out what this stands for. So it looks like, okay, these are blue bonnets. You can see, even though they don't look blue, I mean, if you think they're different, but I'm almost 100% this is a blue bonnet here. And then it says WIBC 1968. So I'm gonna have to find out what that is. <laughs> Women's International Blue Bonnet Conference right i'm gonna find out what that is because yeah i mean it's but there are probably some people that that collect blue bonnet things because that's the state flower of texas fyi so you're a little texas history there <laughs> all right then we've got this leaf which i'll probably put into a lot because it's just it's not really good quality what is hey can y'all see what pancakes eating thanks all right and then another one i i have or i have sold one similar to this but i think it had a green stone in here so this one I'll list, and um, there's another one. They really like the style. And this one has a maker's mark, so I'll have to look it up on there. I can't really see it very well right now. Um, oh, okay, cool, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Caroline says it would be a shame to split them. All right, I agree. Okay, so here, Women's International Bowling Conference. That makes sense, right? Thank you, Caroline, for looking that up. So I guess that was their, why is it Blue Bonnets then? I mean, maybe because it was in Texas. Maybe that was the year they ha had it in Texas. <laughs> oh, how am I loving my ring? I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Okay, so this one will go into a lot. Again, it's missing stones and it's pretty dingy looking. Wait till you see this one, guys. Oh my gosh. Here's another one that I cannot believe doesn't have a maker's mark. Oh, it does. <laughs> I just saw the mark. Like, I couldn't find a mark on this the other day. I'm not even going to show you until I find the mark. I'm going to make you wait. Oh, it's not a maker's mark. It just says made in Austria. Okay, here we go. Ready? Set. Look. Look how gorgeous this is. And again, no maker's mark, but it says made in Austria. Oh my gosh. Okay, tell me I can't make $90 back on this haul. This is so beautiful. Here's the back. On the pin part here, it says made in Austria. I mean, to me, that's just, I wish it was a necklace, right? It might be one of those that are like, you know, they, they make those pieces that you can slide onto the pin and it has a, the loop on it and then you can just wear it. Cause I'm like, that is so beautiful. Um, so if I sell this, <laughs> if I sell this and not keep it to wear forever, um, I, I would want at least $40 for this. At least. I, I'm, I'm not even going to, you know, I could look it up all day long, but I would want at least 40 bucks. Right? It's got the red cabochons. It's got the, the blue, I mean, the purple, all these swirly swirls, the open work, the filigree. 
I just love it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the next up, again, this one's really pretty too. I swear I looked these over for, for marks, and I'm seeing marks that I didn't see before. I, oh, that one's upside down. I can't really read it. Even when I turn it around, I can't read it. B-T-G-S-I-L is what it looks like it says. But this is an abalone shell uh, flower brooch. So, yeah, I'm going to sell this. Again, this one will probably go, I would say, 15 to 20 bucks. personally. I'd be willing to wait for this one. Yeah, <laughs> Murphy, Murphy the Esky's like, make that brooch into a necklace. I think I will. I just love it, right? I love it. Okay, okay, okay. Moving on, moving on. We got a lot to see. Um, another one of these, you know, I see these every now and then. So it might end up in a lot. We'll see. Um, and then here's another one that I will sell. It's not super high quality, but it's really pretty with these blue blingy um, stones in this open work sort of flower. It's kind of like a spiraling flower. Um, so I'm guessing probably, you know, 12, 15 bucks. Again, I'm just guesstimating, guesstimating. And look, cuckoo clock. <laughs> I have never seen a cuckoo clock brooch before. So I'll have to look that up. I'm sure there's somebody who collects clock jewelry. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. All right. So next, what was that? You know, there's some little service. I'm not showing all because there's like little service award pins and little things like that. So we'll see. Um, a little more for that abalone brooch. Lydia says, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, again, I'm just, I'm trying to play it safe on my estimations, even though some people think I'm, I overinflate, but hey, whatever. Okay, so next, tell me in the chat, what do you want to see next? Men's accessories, clip-ons, or more necklaces, the bigger necklaces. And I'm sliding them over. Um, oh, it looks like a snowflake. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Another good keyword. Yeah, so the flowery, spirally one with the blue stones, so snowflake. Okay, if you're just jumping in, I see some some num my numbers jumping down there. Make sure you hang out till the end because I'm going to tell you something that's going on in um, Jewelry Lovers that uh, is new, Texas Scout Jewelry Lovers, where we're really going to be working on helping each other improve our listings. But I'm telling you more than I should right now. So, okay, necklaces. Okay, cool. So let's set these down here. I, I went through and organized all this yesterday, so it would be a little more fluid <laughs> when we do the video okay necklaces so this was one of the jewelry boxes that was that was there it's really pretty kind of inlaid lacquer sort of look to it the inside needs work some of the bits are like, eh, like that um, but the music does play on it so I'm not gonna play it right now because then it won't stop so oh yes slam the like button flip on hustler says thank you oh was Nick here Oh, I didn't even see you. Hi, Nick. <laughs> I saw somebody say, bye, Nick. I totally missed it. I'm on my own planet. Okay, so first up, beautiful, really simple necklace, but it looks like logs, okay? So if you are a Twin Peaks fan, this would be perfect for the log lady, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so um, her log has seen many things. So there's... This wooden, <laughs> well, they, it's not wooden, but it looks like logs. And then there are woven log clip-ons to go with. So, so like so. Again, they're so unusual. I can't decide if I want to keep them together. Normally, again, I don't normally put my things together, lock them together. But these are so unusual. <laughs> I might. I don't know. So, again, I, I'll have to look this up. I didn't see a maker's mark on it. But it's logs, y'all. <laughs> so I, um, I, I'm, I would be leaning towards twenty dollars or so, maybe more, for the set, probably closer to thirty, because it's logs. <laughs> I write love Twin Peaks. Yes, I haven't started. The, I haven't watched any of the new Twin Peaks. Have you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dare Murphy the Esky is daring me to have the music box playing in the background and just completely act like it's not happening and just have the voice keep whining it the whole time. What if it's creepy? 
Okay, at the end, I'll wind in. How about that so y'all can hear? Okay, so this is a necklace. It is broken. This is the clasp, right? So it should have like a box piece that slides in. I'm guessing it would be an easy fix, but I'll probably, I just have so much that I'll probably just end up putting in it a lot because, you know, like my guys, you know, looking for steampunk stuff. Somebody's going to want all these different styles of chains and, you know, to put it together. To put it together. Um, keep them together. Oh, okay. Okay, so this one I picked up. I just loved one. It's got that amber look to it. They're not amber. Um, and as I look at it now, I just realized those are buttons. Oh, <gasps> how cute. I didn't even realize they were buttons. I just thought they were like these barrel beads like so, but look, somebody has made this. They did such a good job. They're buttons. And then they put these like amber colored beads in between. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I really didn't know that that was buttons, but they are, they're buttons. So I'm guessing, you know, probably in the $15 range for that, you know, amber colored. You gotta be careful though, if you call something, because I had something that I called ivory colored and Etsy took my listing down. And I even was messaging back and forth with a guy. I'm like, I, it's not ivory. I just said it was ivory colored. Too close, like, no, no, no. It's misleading. Now my cats are going to fight. Okay, this is the one that I'm going to fix. I don't normally fix stuff, but, but look at this necklace. Look at the colors in these beads. And I've got to figure out what the name for that is. I know Cindy was talking to me about that. The the little beads up here, like these are that like Aurora Borealis, um, iridescent kind of look to them. But then these other ones with the multiple colors in them, so cool. But this one is missing one. And where is it? Where is it? See, it's even so hard to find. Here it is. There is missing one of these like amber colored stones right there, but it's in, it's there so I can fix it. So, oh yes. Oh my gosh, I'm a hippie chick. I just need some elastic to stick on the back. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna look this up. Again, this is one, let's see. Here's my maker's mark. It says art, which I need to find out more about. There was a single earring that matched this. So in my in my little tub that had like singles that didn't have the mates, there was one earring. So probably what would happen is when I sold this, I would throw that one earring in. So if they lost a stone, they could like harvest it from the earring, you know? Um, okay, okay. You'd buy it, I'd buy it right away, Jill says, sweet. Um, yeah, so I, again, I don't know. I have to find out about that maker on this one. Um, yeah. Ah, so there's that. Oh, you love art pieces. Good. See, I, I don't find a whole lot of that. All right, so let's put this back in here, and then I can move on to the, I've got a few more ear, um, necklaces in here to show you in the bottom drawer. Um, there's one that's got these little fetish birds on this silver chain. This one is really interesting. It's the state of Oklahoma. And it's got the star and all the blue and, you know, crystal -y stones. It's really pretty. So I have zero idea how much to sell this for. I have no frame of reference. Oh, good call, Dana. Aries can become pendants. And, you know, y'all talk to me about that all the time. And I always, and not that I forget, but I just I don't think about it. I don't know. Um, then there's this inlaid parrot, macaw. Anyway, we'll have to figure out what kind of bird that is. So that one, you know, again, maybe eight to 10 bucks. Um, uh oh, there goes, we've got a little geode. The music box is starting. These are becoming more common. So I'm not sure, I don't know. Toucan, I don't know, his beak, is his beak long enough for a toucan? You love the bird, oh sweet, okay. And then we've got this, oh these cats, okay. This necklace with two owls, it's got a mama owl and a baby owl. I can get it going the right way. And these ones, it would be tempting to call Jelly Belly, but Jelly Belly are technically made by Trifari, which I don't think this is at all. Nope, nope. Um, but it's a double strand, so the little one hangs higher than the, I mean, I think a lot of people still use Jelly Belly for things like this, even if it's not Trifari, because that's what people are gonna call it when they're looking for it, you know? 
So there's that. Whether or not it's against the rules, I don't know. Um, then I've got this shell, carved shell pendant with a star. Like so. Again, ah, well, what do you think on that? I mean, I would say at least 15. I just think it's really pretty and intricately, probably laser carved, but still. And then <laughs> a necklace, 1776, with the American flag on it. So again, I'll have to find out. Definitely vintage on that. Okay, so next up, let's do, oh dear. How, I, I'm like, I don't even know how long we've been at this. We've been at it for a while, haven't we? Maybe I should have done a two-parter. Oh, well. How long have we, have we been at it? Oh, dear. We really have been at it for a while. Should we stop and do, let me know in the chat. Should I go ahead and stop and do the earrings and cufflinks later? Maybe I will. Because we've been at it for a while, haven't we? Um, <clears throat> gelatin tummy, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I definitely have more. I still have um, the clip-ons, and I've got the men's accessories. So I'm going to hold off because I'm already over the hour mark. You guys are like, keep going, keep going. But I'm already over the hour mark, and I know it gets hard to watch after that point. So, oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> Okay, 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 they've convinced me. Peer pressure in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try to speed it up. So I'm gonna show you what I have left. So men's accessories, I'll save for the end, and then we'll do um, clip-ons. So what I did with the clip-ons was I went and found all the mates, and I, I clipped them together so I could find them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, y'all peer pressured me. <laughs> so let me um, share. So I did a little research just on clip-ons because they can take longer to sell. But as you see, you know, here are some that are sold on eBay. Um, these are some little CB braided type ones that have sold for, you know, around 10, 12 bucks. They don't always sell for that price. Um, some people sell clip-on earrings in lots. It just kind of depends on the style and the quality. So do a little digging and see what, you know, if what you've got is worth hanging on to um, to sell individually. So I'll just kind of flash them up there for you. So there's these. Um, I, I have to decide if I'm going to sell. Like, these might go into a lot. Also, if they don't clip really strong, they would probably end up in a lot as well. These are little wreaths. Um, there's quite a few that are like this, that like kind of beaded style. So personally, unless they're like really hot, they look like really high quality ones, I'll probably put them into a lot. Um, these ones I might try to sell by themselves just because of the variety of colors, the greens, the blacks, the purples. Um, these ones are really funky um, <laughs> with the, yeah, that, yeah. I might try to sell those by themselves because they're funky. And these ones I'll sell, again, by themselves. They're lightweight. They're gold. They're very, you know, professional, professional girl looking. <laughs> um, these will probably go into a lot just because, just because. Um, some had markings and some did not, so I'll have to, I'm just going to try to fly through these a little bit <laughs> for you guys, because I feel like I've been on forever, and I, I hate to make y'all watch too long. Um, so here's these red, white, and blue ones. I'll probably sell by themselves. These ones are the Intaglio. If you, I'm, I meant to mention these when I talked about, um, cameos, but this is that sort of carved, instead of it being carved like a, oh, you know, these are not Intaglio. Never mind. These are. They're made to look kind of like that, but you can see it's raised. So the intaglio, or maybe saying it wrong, where it's like carved out, you know, or carved from the back. Um, but it usually has that kind of like iridescent. I didn't look at these really close. So those ones I'll sell by themselves, but they are cameo rather than the carved out kind. These will go into a lot. Um, these ones, I don't know. They, they may end up in a lot, but they're really 80s. If, if 80s is still hot by the time I list them, <laughs> then I'll list them by themselves. Um, these ones may go into a lot as well. There are a couple pairs of the love story ones that match the brooch, but I will sell them separately. So there are these ones, ah, like so. And I'm guessing they're probably made by the same company. They're, they're that art brand. Here's another love story pair like that. Uh, I'm going to just kind of pick through and show you my favorites. How about that? <laughs> Cause there's a lot, there's a lot in here. So here's another pair that I really like with the red. They're really blingy. 
Um, yeah, as you can see, there's a bunch in there. Um, these ones are really fun, the big sunflowers. So there's a bit of wear to them, but I might still try to sell them by themselves. Um, these ones I'll sell by themselves. Again, they're just really pretty. Okay. For the most part, the others, oh, here's some that I really liked as well with that copper color. And it looks like there's stone in there. So that's, and these ones are screw backs. So, oh, oh, there was one other pair. Look at these. I have never seen anything quite like these. They're like a pewter cat with a little blue stone clip on earrings. I've never seen anything like these at all. Look at that. That cat looks kind of wicked though, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, and there was a mark on these, but I really couldn't make it out. It looks like kind of a crest almost, or maybe some sweet. I don't know. So I will have to do a little digging on those. I'm thinking they're pewter and not silver, but I'll have to, you know, check them out a little closer just on first glance. So I think that's, you know, the, there's a pair that look like this. Those will sell by themselves. I mean, but a lot of them are just this kind of style of beaded ones, like so. You know, there's a lot of that, beaded. There's another, like, cameo one in there. There's a cell. Um, all right, uh-oh. Is it choppy? Uh-oh. Okay, so let me do the men's accessories, and then we will we'll call it. So, again, this all of this was 90 bucks. Um... Nice pair of cufflinks, probably, you know, 10, 15 bucks on those. Uh, tie bar, it's pretty standard, so maybe eight, eight bucks. Um, there is a really nice belt buckle here. And it's got this, what I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to look, but I think it's sort of like a landscape Jasper piece in there. But it almost looks like a desert scene, doesn't it? And then like the night sky, really cool. And there's no maker's mark on that, um, but I would probably put it at least $20, if not more, on that belt buckle. And we've got some cufflinks and tie bars. So these, you know, maybe around the $20 mark for the pair, for the, a lot of that. These ones are pretty standard, so probably about 10 bucks on those. Um, there are cufflinks to go with this one. So as long as they're in good shape, eh, um, then they'll probably go up around 20 bucks. This one, I just did a video, and I can't remember what it's called now, um, where it's got this like gold, like leafing inside. What is this called? <laughs> I just did a video about this, and my brain is just like, can't keep it up. Um, but there's a word for this, and I can't remember it right now. So, there. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find the mates. These ones here, uh, I'm trying to see if that's scratched. Yeah, it's scratched. These will probably end up in a lot because you can see where the black um, coating was scratched off. So those will go into a lot. And these ones are nice. So I'm going to do a little digging on these. They've got this blue enamel, oops, upside down with a crown on them. And you can even see the burst behind the crown. If these have a maker's mark. I don't see a maker's mark on these, um, but these ones will go up for a bit more because of that awesomeness, the awesomeness of them. Um, let's see what else is in here. We've got some Fleur de Lis. I think I sold some similar to this, uh, about 12 bucks or so. So some Fleur de Lis ones. Where is the, I, there's a bowling one in here, I know. I'm trying to find it. Here it is. Okay, my tie tack. So there's a bowling, my, I feel like my fingernails are distracting. It's a guy, it looks like he's about to throw his bowling ball. So that'll be good for a bowler. Um, I'll have to look at comparables on this one because I don't, I don't, I would say I'm gonna put him up higher than 10 bucks because of subject matter. So that goes a long way with um, men's accessories, definitely. Because if it's just like ho-hum, they might just go for 10 bucks unless it's, you know, real gold or something like that. Um, but if they're just kind of like blah, usually around 10, 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've got some golfing cufflinks. You know, these will probably go up for a little bit more because of the subject matter as well. So, oh yeah. <laughs> and then y'all tell me what you think about this. Okay, so this is a keychain. This part is missing something. And then this part comes off. So do you, is this like um, for a valet? Like let's say you're valeting your car. Would that be what this would be for? Like this would be for your car key and you would remove that to hand to the valet and then this would keep your house keys and stuff on it. Is that what that is? Tell me what you think because that's what I think it is. We would just need another keychain on that end. So that's pretty much it as far as the men's accessories. So let me know how you think I did with the 90, 90 bucks. There was a few other, you know, I got this mirror um, for a buck 50. And I've sold, I know they still sell these. Here's the thing. I know that you can still find these, right? And you can find them at garage sales for a buck 50. I have sold a one that was like a silver tone one for almost $100. So I think it's just, you know, what somebody is looking for and what they're willing to pay. So they might be looking for this kind of patina. They might be looking for these like big screws on the side. Um, so don't be afraid to price your stuff high because somebody who's looking for that particular thing is going to be willing to pay it. Um, so I have notes to my notes to self, notes to self. Okay, once again, I have got, stay tuned, I'm not done. I'm going to tell you what's going on in Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers that you need to come over to join because it's going to help you with your reselling, learning about jewelry and learning how to, how to improve your listings. But make sure right now before you go to do these three things, go down there and subscribe. Join me on Facebook at Texas Gal Treasures and follow um, and join Texas Gal's Jewelry Lovers so that you can stay up to date and learn lots of new things and how to improve your jewelry sales. So right now, uh, we just started this in jewelry, uh, Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers. I keep forgetting to change the name. Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers. We just started this. It's called Extreme Makeovers Jewelry Edition. So what we're doing is we're taking 10 members. They're the first 10 to, to throw a listing in there um, are the ones that get helped first. You share, depending on the theme, this week is bracelets. So share one listing of a, a bracelet that you have listed that's not selling that you want help with. And so the members will go in and we'll give you constructive tips. Nobody's going to be mean because that's not the way we run our uh, group. So everything's going to be really constructive. And so whether your piece of jewelry gets selected for that week's extreme makeovers um, or not, you can still learn from the tips that are being given. So throw your listing in there. Members are going to come give you tips. They're going to look at your listing, tell you how to improve your pictures, your title, your description, make sure, you know, maybe you forgot to put something in there like, ah, you, you know, and I do that all the time. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot to put bracelet in the title, you know, or something, it happens. So go in there um, and then I'm going to create a video. If, if you have shared your listing and you're like, I don't want my shop name out there in the video, um, I can blur it out, no problem. And so we'll create a video and I'll tell, you know, what the tips were that the members gave. And then if I have any additional tips, I'm going to add those there. Like, don't, um, this is something else you might think about doing. So when you are going back, you can fix your listings, but also if it's not your listing, once again, you can learn amazing things by the tips that other people give. So really educational, really helpful, really a good way to help improve your jewelry sales and to learn more about, you know, maybe you've got the stone listed wrong. Maybe it's, you know, you've got it listed as how light and the members are like, dude, I think this is real turquoise. You may want to take a second look at this. You know, so you, you know, maybe your price points off. Anyway, I will, I will keep going on, but I'm pretty excited about it because number one, education is my big thing and making sure that everybody is, you know, doing the best they can for themselves. I'm really passionate about jewelry and really passionate about helping everybody to do better. So definitely go over. I think we've got four or five, unless a few more have popped in. So there's still room for a couple more on this one. Um, and we are going to uh, have a different one. We'll see if we do it weekly or bi-weekly, depending on how it goes. Uh, Bi-monthly. Bi Bi-monthly. Okay. So again, go down there, do those three things. Hit subscribe. Follow me on Facebook at Texas Gal Treasures and join Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers. Links are down below. Cool. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. Bye. Oh, my, my, my mouse has disappeared. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Bye, guys.